Welcome to MRTV's People in XR. This is the podcast that introduces you to the most exciting players in the industry. And here is your host, Sebastian Ong. In this episode of the People in XR podcast, it is my utmost pleasure to say hello to Kevin Henderson, who is the head of US operations for Pimax. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm uh, doing really well. Good to talk to you again. Yeah, exactly. We saw each other at CES for the first time this year, and it was really a pleasure to meet you. And uh, overall, great news for Pimax to have you there now as the head of US <laughs> operations. Yeah. So um, for all of our viewers and listeners who happen not to know Pimax, I think there's not many people who watch this podcast who do not know Pimax. However, right. pro probably <laughs> probably there are some. So could you please let us know, um, yeah, what is Pimax and um, what kind of products do you offer? Uh, well, uh, Pimax uh, offers virtual reality headsets. Uh, we have uh, several uh, models of virtual reality headsets, and uh, you know, of course, our claim to fame is high resolution and high FOV, uh, and uh, try to uh, ratchet up the immersion and you know, and offer it for some uh, prices that people can uh, that people can reach. You know, so I think uh, you know, Pimax has largely uh, been successful at getting to that in the virtual reality business, but. Uh, you know, as anything, you always have a long road to go to get it out to everybody. Sure. So actually, this is a value proposition, which sounds pretty amazing. Make a product that's better than everything on the market <laughs> and make it cheap. Right. So basically, well, that's, what, that's what attracted me to the company. <laughs> right. Right there. Right. So uh, with this kind of value proposition, you should be selling shitloads of headsets. Are you doing that? <laughs> you know, we sell everything we can make and more. <laughs> so, right. Uh, right. Uh, you know, clearly, you know, that's the challenge. Uh, you, I don't think anyone expected the overwhelming response that that Pimax has gotten. Right. And uh, and the and the you know and sort of the untapped interest in the PC VR business. Um, right. right. You know, uh, there was a true void there to be filled, and and uh, people want immersive computing. You know, people want that dream. That we all had, you know, when we first started thinking about these things, uh, watching movies, uh, you know, Tron and, <laughs> and other other f famous things from way back, you know, that was the dream. And today, you know, we're trying to make it really happen. So. Cool. So you are at the edge of this VR revolution, trying to make the very very best headsets. But let's exactly. let's let's go a bit back to the start, the 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 rise to fame. For Pimax, it was this right. huge. It was this huge Kickstarter campaign for the Pim, right. for the Pimax 8K. I think it was in November 2017, right. and uh, um, yeah. So it was the Pimax 8K, a headset that right. that promises promised at that time the biggest FOV, 200 degrees FOV diagonally, right. and the right. best resolution ever. And actually, this became the biggest VR Kickstarter of all times, right? Right. Yeah, it's, at the, <laughs> the, it's, in the, it's literally in the Guinness Book of World Records. Right. And uh, they have a page, they have a section for it on there. That's yeah. incredible. Really, you're in the Guinness, Guinness World it, Records book. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, uh, wow. you know, at the, at the office, they have a, you know, the first thing I, when I first visited, they opened the book and, and showed me. They're very proud of that, and I can, and I, and they should be. Right, so. right. So th this was the Kickstarter, and well, obviously, Pimax got lots of attention because of the Kickstarter, and well, then we kind of usher into the period of chaos. <laughs> Of trying to make it work. <laughs> of trying to make it work, of course. So right. the, the company faced lots of problems, right? Like, right. Um, P, um, first of all, it was a promise that the, the Pimax is going to come out in, in January uh, 2018 right. for all the backers. And uh, yeah, this r didn't really happen. Then there were right. lots of communication problems. So first of all, for all the people who, who are not familiar with all this, Pimax is a Chinese startup. Correct. Right? There's, there, there hasn't been a single Western team member of Pimax. They are all Chinese. 
which is not not a bad thing. But of course, as far as I know, uh, you <laughs> as know, far uh, as you I know. guess ninety nine point nine percent. That's true. <laughs> I guess I'm it when it comes to uh, people based in other places. Right. Exactly. So yeah. yeah, there's been lots of confusion. People people were not happy about not getting the devices. People were sure. not, people were not happy about the lack of com communication or sometimes even miscommunication and so on and so forth. So, right. but we don't need to go into detail with this part. I think we have talked about it a lot on this show, on this channel, and you have talked about this as well. And uh, you know what I'm more interested in now is how you got to the company. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, it seems like you are the first Westerner. You're the first person who speaks right. English like at, 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 at that levels, at your levels, at a native speaker levels. And um, yeah, right. I'm, I'm just interested in this. So um, what is the special challenge for you? You are the first non-Chinese team member of Pimax. Right. Is, that, is that true? It is true. And, uh, and of course, you know, the challenge is the language barrier. Uh, I, I know that you speak uh, Chinese, I do. <laughs> but, uh, but I do not. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, uh, but, um, you know, we, we, we communicate every day for hours on end every day. Uh, and uh, all the way back, uh, you know, since uh, I started in December. All right. And, uh, so you're and still we communicated. Very Still yes, very fresh and, on the and, team. and and we communicated before that when we were talking about uh, the uh, you know uh, batting around ideas on how it might all work, and uh, you know so um, but yeah uh, started officially in December, and uh, of course uh, didn't have a you know when when I showed up and talked to you uh, at CES I was truly fresh <laughs> you know right. at, at that time, <laughs> um, but um, but yeah the the difficulties revolve around uh, where. You know, where when you when they try to get things out to the public, you know, sometimes the wording isn't clear. And and, you know, and the, even when they're communicating with me, you know, sometimes we've gotten it down now to kind of a science. <laughs> but uh, but uh, in the earlier days, getting the ideas back and back and forth, you know, that was the challenge. And, and they, you know, and it's and it's interesting, you know, seeing. You know, when they when they would write something that's sort of that's public facing, you would, uh, and I would, you know, look at it and, th and throw in my you know re revisions. Uh, but you know, sometimes the ideas that they were getting across were very were confusing, even for me. You know, and I would have to quiz you know for an hour or thirty minutes or more to make sure that the ideas I'm getting across are exactly what they want people to see. And I think during that period of time that you were talking about, uh, where they didn't have that, some of the ideas and information are getting across w weren't real clear. And, I think uh, that's the big part of the problem. I totally agree. So I think we've, I think the uh, when we do right now, when we have a, we have a much better system for, um, you know, for getting uh, concepts and ideas out and and getting them out in a way that makes more sense, you know, so. You know what? Actually, I I think so, and actually, I think that you are the sole hope <laughs> of lots of people, <laughs> of, of lots of of Pimax backers who are still right now waiting for their headsets, for example, and they they have sure. so much hope in you. And actually, I think it was just the right thing of Pimax to yeah to get you on board. And I really believe. Pimax needed somebody like you to be able to communicate with us Western audience, right? Because, yeah, just as you said, there's been they so know. much miscommunication. And, uh, yeah. yeah, they need somebody to turn it around for them, isn't it? Well, Are between, you the guy? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, they've been really, really welcoming to me and incredibly friendly to me and, and, and just willing to work me into different aspects of the company. Um, You know, and and plus they've been really interested in in some concepts and ideas that I might have brought to the table, for for ways to uh, kind of bring uh, maybe some concepts and ideas that I've had in other uh, companies that I've either you know uh, worked with or had some kind of a leadership role in. So, uh, and they've really embraced uh, some of that. And uh, and so I, I really do think that 
you know, I mean, you got to keep in mind, Pimax is a small company, you know, and as I, as I've said before, uh, you know, you look at you know Facebook, they've got forty thousand people. HTC has seven thousand two hundred people. We have in the business office just seventy nine. So, and and when I started, it was far less than that just months ago. Uh, so, you know, you're talking about uh, in some departments where you only have one person. <laughs> you know, I hope this is so, the customer service department. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen well, Sun. You know, right. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, you know, the, the you know, you, not only did you have very few people in some of those departments, there there was a translation layer that had to happen. Oh, really? And then there's right. a time, then there's a then there's the time lag that had to happen. So they didn't get the chance to instantly respond to people with questions. So when people were confused, you had this situation where it had to go for an entire it got to literally percolate for an entire day before they got to respond, you know, try to respond to it again. Right. And then you had the translation layer again. And you know, you had this sort of endless cycle of uh, you know, where where people weren't 100% sure of what the ideas and concepts they were trying to get out. And uh, so I, I think we've really come a long way with that. And on the customer service side, as <laughs> as um, as challenging as it may seem to be, you know, we've been bringing more and more people into it, and we've implemented a lot of procedures. And uh, you know, and I, you know, we we actually now track the amount of time it takes to respond to each person. And a lot of other things. All right, that's so, good to hear. So, and in order to institute, you know consistent improvement into those things you have to know where you are and how long it's taking and a lot of other things and that's some of the things we've put in there oh yeah so so hopefully you know i can uh, make a positive impact uh they've told me that they think so <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. Uh, and, good and, and feel and feel good about it and everything so I, i'm excited that uh you know that to get the chance yeah. to to bring you know some of I, i'm the oldest person at the whole company Right, uh, by far, <laughs> they're they're young. They're relatively young people, you know. And I'm, you know, here I am, almost fifty. And uh, in fact, my my birthday is coming up at GTC when I'll be uh, doing the show uh, out in California uh, for uh, you know with Nvidia, and uh, I'll have my birthday that day, you know. So Perfect. that ought to be interesting. You mean a GDC, <laughs> but, GDC Game Developers Conference in San Francisco? Correct. Nice. Uh, correct. Yeah, we couldn't do GDC. A lot of people have a confusion. That's just yeah. something to clear up. There's some news right there. Just to make sure, uh, you know, GTC and GDC are, are, are two different oh, things. Okay, what is it? Tell us. You know, GTC is more of a B2B show oh, right. uh, ho okay. hosted by NVIDIA. And then GDC yeah. is, the, is a gaming Game conference. Developers. Right, okay. A and, uh, and NVIDIA is doing GTC totally on top of gdc all right <laughs> kind of i guess unfortunately yeah <laughs> you know right uh but um but yeah uh they're uh we, we had to pick we're just not large enough to do both shows and have demos running at both shows and press releases and all the accoutrements you need for two uh which was true for most companies most companies are had to pick between one or the other even large companies like hp had to do that so, um, but you know, we're going to be uh, showing a lot of exciting things there. You know, I guess, uh, you know, as we talk through this, uh, you, we'll uh, yeah, get into some of that. Exactly, exactly. So, cool. So, uh, actually, the big challenge that Pimax is facing, they are a little Chinese company, as you said, but I, they still want to conquer the world market. Oh, sure. Right. So they want to they want to get into the world market and alone they couldn't do it. So they hire you to get the company <laughs> ready for internet international business. And now the question is, how will you go about it? And what are the things in the short time that you've been on board now? What have you already done? Well, you know, Robin's plan is is an excellent plan. Uh, and that was one of the things that attracted me to the company. He has what is his plan? A, a, a very good plan, <laughs> okay. and I've and I've been able to help throw ideas into the mix to try to uh, think of ways to make that plan, to at least parts of that plan, a reality. Um, one of the things is, you know, is the is keeping at the forefront uh, on the technology side. Um, And iterating much faster than uh, than other companies do. Uh, Pimax, their concept 
is to try to get it pack as much technology into these devices and and get it into a price that you know that's reachable right and uh, and his concept is to is to iterate and then slide the you know the SKUs down uh, in price over time and, and have a business model uh, where you know where you, as you introduce new uh, new tech and, and and new features especially really fundamental new features um, that that becomes a new SKU and then you move the other SKUs down and we just continually uh, you know, uh, work on the price, work on our value proposition, and um, right. and 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 build uh, customer confidence that way. And over time, uh, where you are consistently offering a better value proposition than the next guy. It is competition. It is business. That's the way. You know that. And the best way, in my opinion, to uh, to attract the most people and to be able to. Uh, to, to take a leadership role in the marketplace is to consistently offer a better value proposition than the next guy. All right. So it sounds a bit like the mobile phone business where every single year Samsung comes out with, okay, the S10 now, right. the, the Galaxy Fold, all these things. And in the beginning, yeah, they are probably a bit more expensive, but next year the Galaxy S10 will be cheaper than the Galaxy S11. Sure. So is that something and that we can look forward to for Pimax? That okay, next yeah, year you're gonna have gonna, the uh, Pimax 8K Plus Pro, you know, Ultra. <laughs> it stands to reason that you, that you could that uh, that we would be in an iterative cycle, uh, as the company goes. And what a lot of people don't know. Is you know, Pimax invested a great deal into the into their own manufacturing equipment. They don't, of course, Pimax doesn't make air, all the parts and everything. Nobody does. Even Samsung doesn't make 100% of their products. But uh, Pimax actually does manufacture a high percentage. They even manufacture their own lenses. Right. Uh, they're literally grinding lenses and and all sorts of uh, aspects to the to the device. So uh, they invested that way so that they could uh, so they could ramp. And and not be beholden to contract manufacturers for a lot of the for mm -hmm. a lot of the fundamental components. So uh, no, they're poised to uh, on the factory side to really uh, to really ramp up over time and to have that iterative edge, you know, over time. We we have many plans uh, for uh, that we've shown at CES. Uh, right. With eye tracking, with foveate and rendering, you know, with hand tracking, with you know, with all these features, and the Pimax by design is the only modular uh, headset that exists that I know of. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's uh, it's great that you have these ports, and well, you're open to anything that might come up in the future. Yeah, and that and that gives you a nice value proposition to people who already have a Pimax, mm -hmm. you know, because you'll be able to add, you know, a combination of features that you want that you find interesting, you know, that the customer wants some customers are very interested in hand tracking you know some people uh, are interested in you know and eye tracking some people want to have both at the same time wireless you know all the different technologies that are that are kind of uh, emerging in the in the VR business people with the Pimax can can enter into that you know long after uh, they have the headset and they don't have to do a disassembly of their device and and you know and risk you know, tearing it apart. Uh, most people don't want to do that. They can just snap on uh, the component. They can snap in the eye tracking. They can snap in the wireless module. They can snap in the uh, the hand tracking. Right. Uh, so you you have a lot of capabilities at where people can uh, construct uh, their own device. We're also trying to build these uh, modules within emerging standards. You know, like the eye tracking, the new they've added uh, new rules and new standards to the Open XR for eye tracking, and so we made a very big point to make sure that that is supported within the module that, that's in our offering. I so personally think that is that is so much better than like offering a complete new headset like Pimax Pro I, where now your right. Pimax Pro is kind of obsolete if you want eye tracking, and you have to buy the whole new set. Right, so I agree with this. I, yeah, I, I think that I think that generally, you know, people that have that spent a fair amount of, if they, if we were to try that kind of thing, uh, you know, other companies <laughs> that we know it well uh, are in market positions where they can where they can do that, and uh, you know, but um, when you have thousands of employees and uh, and, a, and a fair amount of capital, you can you can just 
sort of go scorched earth on the, I guess, on the. But that's just not our philosophy. Right. Uh, our our philosophy rolls revolves around people getting into the system, and and sure, in a, in a couple of years, we we might be offering a headset that uh, that has features that they want. But that headset will have module capability as well. So mm -hmm. theoretically, you'll be able to move the modules from the, your previous one onto the new one and just invest in that. Okay, got it. So I think our value, that's just part of making a very pr uh, compelling value proposition. Right, you know? got it. So anyways, my, my question before was, uh, what kind of change could you bring into the company in the short time that you've been here. So on the one hand, for sure, communication, right? We can have this relaxed talk right now and we understand each other and right. our viewers understand us. So that is definitely a big plus point. But on the day-to-day -day basis, um, are you able to introduce some other changes to the company? Oh, oh yeah. We've introduced uh, responsible parties for particular uh, having uh, people of absolute responsibility for where anything whatsoever that happens to go wrong in any in any area you know we have a person that is literally responsible for that uh to happen uh you know we have accountability systems uh in place uh you know, we have uh, ways uh very consistent ways of tracking that uh some of these things aren't readily apparent you know the first second that you implement them <laughs> you know <laughs> they they you know they provide benefits over time but they're tried and true methods to turn To, to take to take pieces of your business and, and make it far more efficient and far more accountable and uh, and and much easier to go back and figure out where a, a, an efficiency problem lies uh, a lot of those things systems are in place now and uh, and they and they've really uh, done, gone a long way uh, with those kinds of things uh, having a better pipeline for communication uh, the pipeline is is uh, has been improving rather dramatically uh, and having you know having people willing to making it creating a culture where people are willing to say you know when when it could be done better and you know you you've got to be able to say that and you've got to be able to say hey you know i didn't uh, i i could have done this process better you know everybody from top to bottom needs to have the capability of saying that and And then the team jumps in there, and we come up with a plan. But you know, what you don't want is a is a is a company where where people are, uh, you know, creating sort of cabals inside the company. You want one really cohesive team that works together. And uh, luckily, Pimax had not gotten to any of those. Uh, you know, they weren't large enough <laughs> to get into into those kinds of things. But you know, when you have a, a large company with thousands of employees, man, you get Uh, you get into some, uh, you know, where some of your divisions are, are, are having problems between. We've now uh, implemented systems that really have everybody working together in, in a really great spirit of trying to get this thing done and uh, working towards the benefit of the company. And, uh, you know, you just don't, you don't want to get into where you have individual people who, you know, where, where their world literally revolves around what, you know, what's sitting in the chair. You know, <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, there, there's a lot of aspects to, to business building where you can you can make what you have a lot more efficient. And then the other side of the coin, that's the personal side. Then the other side of that coin is a systems side where where you implement uh, electronic and software systems that are, uh, you know, that are better. And that was the big I think probably the biggest weakness that Pimax has and had and that's a slow thing to fix uh they they had from some pretty uh you know considerable things to try to improve when it came to that and i, I think that was the absolute root cause of some of the inefficiencies uh you know they had systems that were down a high percentage of the time you know and, and if you're If your software isn't isn't able to do things like send emails or send uh, receive emails, you know all kinds of fundamental things, uh, you can't get back to your customers, and and you get and you go into this cycle where they try to contact you again, and next thing you know, you're trying, you know, you've got a customer tries to contact you five times, and you tried to contact them five times, and nobody's communicating. Um, you know that wasn't working, 
So they didn't yeah. have uh, any kind of uh, CRM system in place, or how could I imagine it, this? <laughs> no, they did. They had all of the systems. All right. But they but, didn't work. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, they, 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 the systems had all sorts of both packadillos, <laughs> basically, okay. and they had some uh, bugs and flaws. Remember, this was an early stage company for them to implement a lot of these things. You know, these things don't appear overnight. I imagine uh, most companies, went when they were startups, uh, you go back to the delivery, you know, the kinds of problems that the, in the early days of Oculus and the in the early days of VR, even with the HTC business unit and other companies as well. Uh, you know, it takes time to get these things going. So I don't know if their if, if their difficulties were any any different than many of the other ones were. I think these those were larger companies to begin with, especially you know uh, once they started to you know in case of Oculus it became part of Facebook. Uh, but um, but you know with us you know you know we are small and you don't have a huge amount of people in the IT department. Uh, you know you've got uh, you, you really. Uh, when you all of a sudden have tens of thousands of people, <laughs> you know, uh, who were either interested or ordered, uh, you've got a a pretty tough hill to climb when when that department only has one or two people to begin with. <laughs> right. You know. That makes uh, sense. So so even if you only spend you know ten seconds per person or thirty seconds per person, you know, you're talking about a pretty a pretty tough climb, and right. your software has to be really efficient to manage that. So if you combine, you know, that mix, it, it, you know, it, it was a difficult uh, road for them at first. Of course. But, uh, but now that we're literally seeing, we, we're tracking how long, you know, everything takes and just a lot of other things, uh, we have a really nice picture mm -hmm. of, uh, of where we're at with those things. Okay. So on the software side, and, and I would add to that, you know, local offices will have their own systems that are implemented separately. Uh, so and those systems are being developed independently. Mm -hmm. uh, so and those systems are very tried and true, and they're ones I've used before, um, highly successfully with a very tight ship. So uh, okay. you're gonna. So in the month of March, uh, I don't think these kinds of conversations will be very likely to happen. All yeah. right. Good. Looking forward to that. Now, you know what I'm wondering is how easy or hard is it to introduce these changes to a Chinese company as a complete outsider? You know, I, <laughs> I imagine this is a startup and they, are, they have been doing and working their ways for the last, I don't know, five, six years. They have their kind right. of rhythm. And then suddenly... Four. Yeah, four years. And then there's suddenly there is this American guy, this Kevin shows up and tells them, hey, guys, your systems here, they are all not good enough and now we need to have people who are responsible for this and this you know it's it's very different and you know change they more... they knew all of that okay, already they knew. okay but change is always yeah. like tough right you normally get resistance so i'm wondering did you feel resistance when you said like hey we have to change this and no we have to find people who are responsible for stuff so that they well, work harder how was this for you right <laughs> there there's two parts to that okay you know number one is the is the level of willingness to begin with to, to uh, you know, the, the desire to want to do things that improve. And, uh, and then the other thing is, is, is when you introduce ideas, you know, whether or not they agree with them or not, <laughs> you know, so you have two parts right. of that. So in the case of the willingness, they have a very, very high degree of that. And I was very fortunate in they, they, they embraced a lot of the ideas they had a lot of their own ideas that were uh along some of the same lines uh that uh, that they were already working on uh and so uh what i did was i helped you know put that together into uh kind of a plan that uh, would hopefully uh have a rapid impact uh you got to keep in mind you know the the plan in, also involved at, you know at adding some more people so you you know you introduce slowness when you train new people and when you slow you have to slow down a, a unit to get more people into the unit but right. uh so you, you know you actually you know in an, in the initial phases of trying to bring up uh a faster more efficient capability you slow it down um so but no they were very willing and they both willing able and uh they were um 
they were very uh, much embraced some of the ideas I brought to the table. In fact, they Perfect. pretty much embraced all of the ideas I brought to the table. Perfect. So, That's really good. Uh, so, and they, and the, I would tell you the big one that I really wanted to get to really get through was uh, was to was to have independent systems in the local offices. Mm -hmm. What what does it mean? Uh, independent systems in the local offices so that things like trouble troubleshooting uh tracking all of the uh returns shipping uh, everything to uh credit card processing for you know adding options for customers for you know uh for better handling shipping if someone wanted insurance so you know any of those kinds of things get, have all the systems in there uh and have it local because it's very difficult to implement those things where they happen locally, for instance, in the United States, where it originates in China. Got it. So if you're going to, even if you have a warehouse in the United States that you just sort of pull the strings for in China, you, you, you wind up with very, in effect, what wind up being quite foreign systems with a, with a 12 hour, with a, in a, in a 12 or more hour time lag and, and all kinds of, uh, language uh, barriers with the with the warehouse that that's here and a million other problems and I've tried it in the past and it just doesn't work mm -hmm. so a uh, local office is probably 20 times more efficient uh, at most tasks you know uh, on a on a per hour spent basis so uh, you know doing that and getting that idea across and everybody embrace it everybody was all over one to do that and that'll reduce the burden to the main uh, to our home office in Shanghai rather dramatically as well yeah, because is. North America is over 50% of our customers and you take you add uh, Europe uh, you know you get into the 75% of our customers you know so you you between those two regions <laughs> you've got two uh, you got three out of every four uh, customers right there so all you got to do is implement two uh, independent systems and you cover three out of four people mm -hmm. uh, so right there, your your tech and since the tech support requests have built up over time, once you implement those, then all of a sudden, you know, their burden is probably reduced by eighty or ninety or more percent. Right. Uh, and anyways, so, they don't really understand the questions being asked. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If you see a question and then and then you take it to the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. You won't uh, get a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you really. You got to. And the other problem is you have all these. Um, you know, in in the United States, it's quite the melting pot. You know, you have people in Louisiana that are kind of French. And you have people yeah. in, <laughs> you know, you have people all over the United States Got that it. have different cultures and different accents and the different ways of writing emails. And and a native person understands all of those. And uh, whereas there there they just go off on the on a tangent that, uh, you know, where they're literally answering a different question half the time. You know, right. So I think. And, and on that, I've been able to try to help where people, they say, what is this guy talking about? And they'll send me that every day. And I'll say, okay, this is exactly what he's talking about, and I'll detail it out. Right. And uh, I think that has been a good thing, too. Perfect. So it's really good to hear that Pimax actually completely embraces you and your thoughts and you, you being the, the change agent. So this is really good to hear that you don't have like lots of resistance, but that Pimax actually needs you. You are their savior, and that is really good to know. We all get along. I think that's amazing. That's important. I think important. the best thing is we, we all get along, and people have to know most of Pimax is a, is a bunch of uh, engineers. Yeah, they're nerds. they're they're a bunch they're they've got a lot of people who just sit around thinking about what's the next great thing we could do in VR to make it more immersive, to make it faster, to make the refresh rate higher, mm -hmm. to increase the you know these guys that's that's what they talk about. they that's yeah. their lives. <laughs> the guys and girls at Pimax, you know, are you know that's they are really into VR. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, they're fans of it just like me. So we get along great. That's perfect. And you know what? That's exactly yeah. what I also felt even when I was speaking with with Robin, the founder of the company. He was so yeah, he's great. He was so excited <laughs> to tell me about this new yes. OLED version and he wanted to put it on my face. And you know what? It was not talking about like some business. No, it was like, you know, here, here this yeah. is the this is the new OLED version. Try it. When should we put it on the market? Now, 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 now? <laughs> so yeah, he, he's like, a technical he's a, guy. Yeah. He's all about uh, wanting to make the products better in every way. It's cool. He's yeah. got a million ideas on how that can yes. happen. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, 
and, and the team around him, between he and the team and myself, you know, the whole team tries to combine to figure out, you know, ways that those kind of things can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and Seems and so like a very uh, exciting thing to be in. Yeah, and and, and so you know, and, and I think maybe uh, you know, putting thought into into the into the value proposition and making it really clear and concise, <laughs> you know, right. is is going to be is going to probably be a challenge because you know they have so much interest and so much excitement about you know about whenever a new uh, component uh, you know they want to turn it into a product as soon as possible you know <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I felt that I felt that way <laughs> but it can be it can be confusing for the for the end customer right so they they totally confused the shit out of people in the in the pre-order phase when there was suddenly that OLED version so actually this kind of uh, behavior can and labeling be, it a business edition. Yeah, yeah exactly. Too. Exactly. So, <laughs> so this is like um, not really good for business, right? So, right. Yeah, you got to yeah, step in there. <laughs> we're working on that. That's a that's something that that uh, has already gone through our system to clarify these things, C have a very con uh, concise and easy to understand and logical uh, progression of SKUs. Yeah, that's important. Have have consumer SKUs and business SKUs. Um, That are that have a clear value proposition between them, right? Uh, you know the the problem is when you have feature creep, you 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 lose your value proposition, and, and you have people who get very confused as, as to which which device to choose. Uh, so you wind up in a situation where where people change their minds a lot, mm -hmm. which is you know which has been part at least a, a a part of some of the problems they, they were very very generous and they want to be generous <laughs> you know they want customers to be uh to have every opportunity uh and so they implemented this plan where you can switch between the 8k and the 5k plus and then they added the here comes the oled yeah exactly. <laughs> you know so and oh but maybe you could switch to that yeah and, uh, i think and lots then, of those problems were like made by pymax themselves right oh, of course uh, you know well yeah yeah they, they create the problems the <laughs> The standards <laughs> by which people can, by which people's behavior uh, is is springs from. So right. when you give people options, um, you you wind up, uh, you know, creating, you know, you have Team 8K and Team 5K Plus, and now you've got Team OLED, you know, uh, out on the out in the in the forums and things. So people that have different likes and and you know dislikes, and the one feature that means a lot to them might be really strong on one of the SKUs. So um, having an, a, a clear value proposition is a key component for the company and to, per, and to make sure that when we release a SKU, uh, we properly educate uh, people what the value proposition of that SKU is before it's uh, released. So, that makes um, so much sense. you're, you're going to see at GTC a pretty nice... Um, A, a, a pretty nice clarification of those things, and okay. our SKU set will will be will have uh, three consumer and three uh, business SKUs, and they'll have a very clear value proposition. Okay, perfect. Looking forward to yeah to tell our viewers more about that later. So yep. um, you know what I'm wondering also is how actually does your day-to-day -day interaction with Pymix look like? Do you Skype with them? Do you chat with them? I think you are, uh, you're in Orlando, Florida. This is your home right That's now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I should go there and check out uh, the Disney, Disney, Disney thing is going on. Yeah. And, and, and come visit our offices here. You know, they're, yeah, they're brand new. They're not quite open yet, but, mm -hmm. uh, we do have them and, uh, you know, and it's, it's where we can put some time in there now. That would be amazing. And, uh, Would love we to have shipments. You coming in oh yeah it'd be, it'd be a blast of course that's the advantage of being in orlando you get exactly. a lot of visitors yeah exactly. that are that are here for business <laughs> yeah right purposes. for business yeah just, and yet just and like yet las vegas their, right? <laughs> yeah and yet they have their entire family with them for, yeah, some reason. for some reason don't know why. <laughs> yeah anyway yeah. so so how does it look like you are in orlando and how did you communicate with your team with the team members in china so you said that you talk with them yeah. every day how does it work they have an internal system called ding ding <laughs> and yep And uh, we use, and that is our primary uh, communication system. All right. And uh, and there are at least a hundred <laughs> team members on on Ding. Uh, so there's a lot of back and forth. Um, I, and I think I'm actually a member of all the groups now. So I I can see, you know, so I'm, I'm 
engaged on a daily basis on in most of them for one thing or another. Uh, everything has some has to be aimed at a, at Western audiences, so right. that that gives me the opportunity to sort of uh, have some sort of role in each uh, thing. I mean, you, you, even you know the software. You know, it's you have your English, you have you have all your legal uh, requirements for EULAs and warranties, and and I contribute to those <clears throat> among a lot of other things. And then on the uh, and then we have our uh, our business clients. That our future mostly uh, who uh, are going to be doing things like location-based entertainment and all kinds of things like that. Those are mostly Western, so you know I, I communicate back and forth with them. So okay. I'm kind of a relay. Uh, the video card companies. We have a section in the daily communication for that, where our communication with, you know, uh, with with them and their engineering teams. Now that we're engaged on that, okay. Um, there's uh, and then uh, there's all of our agreements and contracts and, and things that are Western-faced. And then, of course, on top of all that, there's our offices that we're opening here with inventory being transferred and warehousing and all that. All so, right. uh, so there's a lot to do. Uh, no shortage of work. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, uh, and we, and every day I start. Uh, they, they have some members that are willing to communicate with me uh, during the day. So I get communication during the day, but my real heavy um, communication starts at around seven o'clock Eastern at okay. night. Yeah, and on a typical day, I'll I'll run until three o'clock in the morning at All least. All right, wow. So you and uh, you're not bored. <laughs> uh, this morning I was uh, I was this morning it was about five. Wow. A.M. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, we were we have so much to go through and so much to do and um, we we re for instance uh, this morning we released a clarification. To the production plan on the 8K, we did the 5K uh, clarification yesterday, um, yeah. and you know we had to collate all the sources from the from all the way from the factory to logistics people, and shipping, packaging. You know there was a, a very wide chain of of um, of people that had to be involved in in making sure that those um, assertions and promises and and discussions that are in that piece of information we provide the customers is right mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and uh and double checked and uh so we went to great lengths to make sure of that on the release yesterday and today mm -hmm. um so that was part of that and of course we're doing a new software release now the pi tool um so um our graphics card companies are adding more uh testing and requirements to those releases uh so there's a lot of things going on there and i I got to, uh, I've gotten to be involved in some of that. So, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I mean, there's a lot, lot. Of, th Lots this of things is, going uh, on. and then there's of course the interaction. We have, we have thousands of customers. So you got to, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to really think something about, from you. And and uh, you know, and it's funny. You know, you got to, you know, you got to keep an eye out. I mean, there, sometimes you know people. Uh, that are communicating out in the wild on the forums, and, and that can get uh, get very passionate. So you know you got to make sure they don't go too far over. Over passionate <laughs> sometimes, I would say. Like the Paris yeah. forums are something special. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and we've we've had people bring that up a fair amount. Um, customers bring okay. that up in in recent days. So we've tried to put a little more time into that. Uh, we want to we want to try to keep a light touch on it, <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, but but the, you know you, there are certain kinds of things that you, you just can't that shouldn't be in there. Right. Yeah. I think uh, I also think so. Some things were just over the top sometimes. Also, like people I, like starting to fight with each other in like very right. bad ways. You know. I so, agree. So this and and, and people that uh, you know and people don't even get to see that the the things that you know. Uh, when you have one person who doesn't agree with another person, that's okay. But when they start threatening each other, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's too much. <laughs> uh, then you, then that's a not a good thing. Right. And that's and, and we, you know, we typically we were, if there's an actual threat in there, we'll remove it. Okay. Um, but um, we we I don't like fooling with that. <laughs> part yeah, of I it. can understand it. I can understand <laughs> you very well. <laughs> I mean, you are so busy, anyways, right? I mean, yeah. you, could, you could spend your whole days on the forums if you wanted to. If you really get you into could. it, it's just like wow, it's too overwhelming. Overwhelming. 
I've probably post. <laughs> I do. I, I've tried to give people the feeling that someone is there. Right. Uh, in in the last uh, month or so, and uh, I typically post three or four or five times a day where people can see that we we do acknowledge and see them. Yeah. Right. And and I I will I like to uh, make sure that we get some information in their hands and and, right. and try to give them a feeling of uh, that that there's just not some sort of uh, company out there that doesn't that doesn't even know they exist, which right. I think, which I think was uh, <laughs> a very pervasive feeling before. Yeah, some people thought, oh, it's a Chinese scam company that only takes our money, which is of course doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, but why would have anybody you there? Do that? <laughs> yeah, anyways, <laughs> there is a business model, right? There is. <laughs> You know what? The good thing is also that you're going now on talk shows on YouTube that you're here yeah. right now, and probably later we're going to do another QA session. So yeah. people people can simply watch these live shows or these YouTube shows and these Ask Me Anythings, and well, they they will yeah, get their, I, answers, their their questions answered. Yeah, I, I think that when when a company either is silent or largely silent, or or optionally, if they answer questions that people are not asking. <laughs> you know, which, you know, it's very tempting for a company to do that. You know, yeah. they see a whole bunch of, of people that want to know the tough questions and then they answer something else. Um, right. So when when that happens, the customers kind of uh, visualize the twirling of the mustache of some, you know, some uh, hypothetical, uh, you know, uh, person sitting in a corner dreaming up ways to <laughs> to do uh, not so good things. Exactly. Uh, you know, Pimax could not be further from that. That's cool. Uh, you know. Yeah, you've been very open about your production plans, <laughs> like more open than any other company, right? Showing yeah. these uh, production lines, exactly how many they produce. So I think with with that part, you did already a very good job, but there's still other parts that also I think need to be improved, and I think you too. So we're going to talk about this a bit later. Um, Absolutely. So now I would like to understand what you think where does Pimax position itself in the in the industry right now? Where are you right now? And uh, what are your chances and what are your threats on the long run? Uh, I, I think for for us, you know, as I said, our goal is to get as much tech in there as we can and try to keep the price down. Um, and, you know, get it where it's reachable and and sort of have an ever increasing uh, value proposition over time. Uh, especially compared to the competition in other other companies, do I? How do I perceive us? I think that that our goal is to just continually be offered the the, the most leading edge PC VR solution uh, that's out there, um, and and continually improve it. Uh, right. I have a constant stream of improvements within the Pi tool and the firmware, and you know, and the quality. But uh, you know, if you were to ask me, you know, who uh, what companies would I perceive as the most dangerous as far as uh, the competition goes? Uh, some people would throw out some of the obvious ones, you know, you know, the Oculus is HTCs, you know, and some of those. Uh, I don't. I think they have all uh, had a a change of direction in some to some degree. I think uh, that uh, HTC is you know is is focusing on things that uh, that don't necessarily align with the kind of you know the leading edge uh, attempts that we are right. attempting to do. I think that uh, Oculus has has decided that they want to go into a more uh, self-contained uh, device with standalone devices, and and that's their uh, focus. I think I don't think that uh, either of those companies is really gonna within it within at least the next year or so is really gonna uh, really ramp up what they ha what their offerings are. Right. Um, but then you know then you have the companies that that uh, you know are are dangerous Leading, starting one that I would think of is Samsung. Mm -hmm. I think if anybody could could compete with us it's them. Um, you know our our biggest challenge is ourselves is competing uh, with ourselves and and uh, and trying to ramp up production to to meet the demand. It, our our demand is so high that uh, you know that our production uh, doesn't meet that. And uh, I feel that we could really do some extraordinary numbers uh, in the industry and become a very significant player on as a overall percentage of PC VR if we could uh, manufacture that many. All right, got it. And 
So um, what do you think about the following? What if suddenly Valve comes up with this high FOV headset? I mean, that, would, that is quite a threat, wouldn't you think so? I would, I, I, anything's possible. Yes. Um, but if you, my personal feelings on it are, if you look at the Knuckles controllers, which they have been working on, I, I think they're at version six of that, <laughs> you know, now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's t you know, valve time is a word that that is not a <laughs> it's not a joke. Yeah, got it. Uh, they're they're not exactly the fastest uh, company in the engineering side of of any, and, and you, you just look at they're they're just very very deliberate in their uh, especially on the hardware in their releases. Um, I, I think that it might be significant time before we see something from them. All right. But it might also not be the case. We don't know that yet, right? We have already had so many yeah, so many different Knuckles versions, right? But we've also right. seen them now a bit more out in the public. I got the EV3. Others got it too. And it's really it's good. Sure. It's, a, it's, a good it's a good controller. We've seen those pictures of that Valve headset being made. So, yeah, it might not be so know. far I mean, away. They, 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 they have yet to do things like uh, expose the functionality of the knuckles out to the SDK. All right. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot that has to happen um, to get really robust support uh, out there. Uh, and I, I just think that uh, it's going to take some time. I, I would be very I, – I would just say I'd be very surprised if suddenly – They simply appear with a <laughs> uh, with a, a new headset. It just doesn't seem to be their style okay. to me. Okay, <laughs> got it. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so I wouldn't really be, you know, and so, and by the time they do, you know, we'll be a couple iterations <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> further down the road, you know. So, yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, I, I think compared to them, we probably will maintain a a nice. Um, some some Competitive technical advantage. technical advantage te technical advantages yeah all right cool so um talking about those technical advantage what is next in line we got these three models right now the 5k plus the we 8K, work with them on, on the i would mention KBE, that yeah. we do work with them on a daily basis by okay, the way okay cool that's great so you know it, more than i do <laughs> uh i'm not i don't i don't know and i'll just say for the record i don't know specifically any of their plans related right. to a new Uh, okay. HMD, sure. and if I did, uh, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a good it, yeah. plan to talk about it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So um, I was just mentioning like your three models right now: the 5K Plus, the the 5K, um, the OLED version that you're going to rename, and the 8K. Right. And um, yeah, what's next in line? Talking about these uh, technical advantages. So probably the, sure. the 8KX. Is it something that's going to come out in 2019? There's people who have backed it and who are waiting. I for got it. to try it. And how is it? <laughs> I want to try you know, too, as you know. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like. Um, so tell the me. Big debate, the big debate about it is, it, you know, that will be, uh, we, we consider that to be our flagship product. Okay, cool. And, and uh, coming up. Makes sense. Uh, for, the, for the next generation. And, you know, we've announced that and everybody knows that that's going to be the flagship, um, you know, uh, coming up. Um, but I, I think between, just to interject something, in between the 8KX and these existing three uh, SKUs that we have, we have three more that are uh, business-oriented, uh, ruggedized SKUs that we're gonna that we're working on, and uh, and so uh, you're gonna see the three consumer, the three business, and then you'll have the 8KX. So that'll be uh, SKU number seven. All right, for this year, for 2019. Right. Okay. And uh, but the big debate about the AKX is to what degree do do you um, do, do, are we feature complete yet? <laughs> is the is the question, you know? All right. And uh, and so, how did it feel to uh, you when you tried it? Did it feel complete? I loved it. Oh oh, uh, it sounds good. A, it's certainly an upgrade over anything we have. Okay, I would try it um, free of charge for you guys. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, the problem with it is it has two cables. Right. 
Right. That and makes sense. Um, so you need two. It's got two DP one point fours, but the debate okay. is, you know, it's kind of because of that, it's kind of bulky. Right. So you have the two cables tangling and, from uh, your head, right? Correct. And right now they're two separate cables, you know. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Which uh, you know you can get tangled up in real easy when they get separated. Okay. So so we're working on things you can to bind make them together. Yes, that's one of the things uh, we've we've uh, been playing around with. We've also been playing around with better cable tech, you know, newer uh, HDMI, uh, you know, uh, virtual link and uh, and other things. So right, uh, and to see if there, there's a possibility there, but uh, and and to run that as a transport and then split it into two uh, DP 1.4s on the on the uh, video card end as an option. Right. Uh, but um, that's a a little bit difficult thing because. You can sell uh, them together with graphics cards as a bundle. You, you, right. But the question is, do you really, do we really want to get into? There is already people who we owe uh, AKXs to. Right. That's <laughs> Did, right. Quite how, a lot of perhaps, yeah. but how would those people feel if we forced them to buy a new video card that costs, mm -hmm. you know, from Nvidia that's probably going to be twelve or fourteen hundred dollars? You know, mm -hmm. uh, it might make them upset. So. Yeah. Uh, I believe that we need to have an option for them, um, even if we have a, uh, a virtual link port uh, on the device, uh, that they should be able to use their existing video cards with two DP 1.4s or, or whatever configuration we come up with uh, to, to operate it. So it sounds and, uh, like it still needs some time for you to fix these problems. So, so when, do you, when do you think is the 8KX ready for... The mass markets or for for the backers, yeah. When when will the I don't think it'll be. Well, uh, here we are at the you know getting to the end of Q1. Yeah. Um. And and then, but I don't think anybody will see it in in Q2. Okay. Q3, um, Q4, perhaps. Yeah, something like that. But uh, it's something that we you know we wanted. To, it is going to be treated as our flagship product. Uh, we're very big into making that you know the case and uh, and it, the promotions and and all the things that revolve around it will. Uh, it'll be flagship uh, type promotion and discussion and focus. Uh, so uh, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be uh, uh, something that, uh, and that's part of the debate is to what degree? Because you know, on a daily basis, we're polishing Pi Tool, mm -hmm. we're polishing the firmware, uh, we're poli we're doing uh, <laughs> compatibility, you know, ga with games every day. We're making adjustments to make different games work better. And as you experienced yourself. Where, where you would report in the past, where you say, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. Uh, it had to go through a process. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it takes a long time. And it does. And, and we are still doing that today. Yeah. Um, we had a report that there was a glitch in uh, iRacing yesterday. And I saw on the famous uh, you know, Ding talk, I must have saw 50 messages flying around about that. Okay. And right. they really they notice that when someone says this piece of software has this problem at this, especially when they're very specific about uh, it doesn't resonate a lot when customers. This is a little piece of advice for people on the forums. <laughs> if you have a, a, a game or a piece of software or anything where there's some sort of problem, I highly suggest you point out exactly how to replicate it. Of course. If you just say, it, oh, man, it doesn't work, that kind of thing. It's guaranteed, tough to solve it. you're yeah. you're not going to get as much resonating action on the company's part. But if you say, uh, we saw a report uh, yesterday where someone said, if you go on this turn on this track at this time and this with these exact settings, this happens and it and th there's a problem. Mm -hmm. They're all over that, you know, and right. uh, and so that that caused a, a very significant reaction on the company's. So, uh, you know, my recommendation would be to make sure that you give them sufficient information to jump in there and fix it. That's why they liked stuff coming from you mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, uh, and Sweeviver because the reports coming back were very, very good. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and then they and could they really do something about it, about these things. Yeah. That we, that and as long, as, them, they can, right? as long as they can actually replicate right. what you say. It's always the same with engineering. You need to be yeah. able to replicate it. But if you have to spend five hours just trying to figure out, to try to zero in exactly where some specific thing happens, you, your engineers are, are going to look at things that take less than five hours to jump right. on. Because they've got, right. they got other things they can work on, too. Got it. But, uh, but one nice thing about those kind of fixes and the, those kind of polishing or that kind of polishing is if you fix that kind of a problem in iRacing, for instance, you might actually fix 
uh, some problems in other games that sure. you don't know. Mm. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> now you've suddenly created compatibility with, a, yeah. with a, an entire series of things most right. of the time. Of course, occasionally you break something. <laughs> when you, you fix one you thing, to. you break another thing, you know. Right. But they, but but back to the flagship on the AKX. Uh, you know, they they want that to be the flagship. They want the software to be polished. They want the firmware to be polished. Uh, they want the feature set to be polished. Um, you know, they they really want that to be a nice release. Wow, looking forward to that. And I, I have a feeling you have good chances because you've made so many experiences now with the current models and the Pi 2 will already be uh, yeah, much further than where we started at, like uh, half a year ago or so. So that seems to be very interesting. Yeah, the, um, I would say that the, uh, you know, that it's, the, the AKX is a lot like... Um, you know, in effect, it's an 8K without a scaler. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. That's what we all uh, want. <laughs> exactly, uh, but it it actually has some other improvements too. So we'll not we'll announce those later. But um, I think people uh, will be pretty happy with what they see from it. Uh, it'd probably be better than what they expect. Cool. Very cool. So Kevin, I got so many more questions, but sure. I. I also need to think about your time, right? So, ah, yes. So, I, uh, so I cannot <laughs> ask them all. And I have so many questions about uh, problems and how you want to solve them. So I would say that these questions we're going to do later in a live stream, not in this podcast. That sounds great. So, so then in this podcast, I would now would like to ask you, if everything goes according to plan, where is Pimax in five years? And um, how will the company change from what it is now according to your vision? Uh, I, I want this to be, uh, you know, the, I, I think Pimax is positioned to be a genuine market leader very quickly. Uh, not just in, in having the tech, but also uh, the volumes and the amount of people uh, that can use this tech to jump into VR. I want what Pimax produces to I'm a VR fan, so I've got two sides of that. You know, the, there's the business part of me <laughs> that wants to see Pimax financially successful, but I also want to see VR to be uh, successful. So when you say five years, I think Pimax is, is – I would like to see them be a big part of helping VR become uh, a successful medium. Um, I want VR headsets to be – to become literally – the finest media device that you can reach out and grab. Right now, you know, a lot of people when they look at the finest media device, they go into Best Buy <laughs> and they want that 85-inch OLED super ultra uh, TV with every bell and whistle and it's, you know, the nicest thing out. I want VR headsets to be the best media consumption device period that you can that you can use. And you know, and, and for Entertainment. When someone walks in there, I want people to know that and see that and feel that, and that be widely considered to be the go-to technology. So, if and right now, like I say, that same that person, that buyer, at the moment, walks in looking for, uh, you know, a very high-end uh, t television. So, uh, the the way, the distance that VR can go in in media consumption and general work. Uh, and competing with things like high-resolution monitors, you know, the the field is wide open for all the use cases that VR has. And on top of that, you know, you have all your business case uh, aspects to it. You in five years, you'll see location-based entertainment that is scary uh, realistic. <laughs> you know, right? And uh, you you know things like the, like the Void and uh, uh, and Nomadic and and other uh, uh, Psycho and other LBEs. When you go to them, uh, they will be something really special. That business is growing cr like crazy, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, we can be a big part of that. Wow, that sounds amazing, and I wish you all the best for it, Kevin. Do you still have like 15 minutes to talk about your background? Uh, I, I've got maybe five. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then we can. Uh, but then later on, uh, yeah. you know, we can we can jump into some of those things if if you like. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but uh, no, if you want to, I can just run through you know some of the things I, yeah. I and we can go into it in more detail a little bit later. But just people that are that are if anybody <laughs> in the world is interested at all, uh, I think you know, so. I'm a 
I, I'm I'm from Texas. All right. I saw people. I saw people in the live stream yesterday uh, accusing me of being from Texas. It's <laughs> no, it's true. All right. The ex- accusation uh, I, I'm is originally, true. Yeah, I'm from San Antonio, uh, okay. and I'm from a small town uh, south of San Antonio. My hometown only had two thousand people in it, and uh, and my uh, my school only had a very small uh, number of people in it. And uh, so, uh, and my school and he, uh, it was uh, something like ninety uh, something percent percent Hispanic, and uh, you know, not unlike uh, my situation with Pimax, <laughs> you know, that right. where I have uh, I'm, it's ninety nine percent from Asia. Uh, you know, that was kind of like my early days of school, um, but um, I uh, so. I'm very uh, familiar with integrating with uh, other cultures because okay. of that. Got it. Cool. <laughs> but uh, but the bottom line on it is, I you know I grew up, I went to school there, uh, graduated uh, very early. Um, I, uh, I became I worked uh, in the space industry. Uh, I opened up uh, some computer stores. I had a whole chain of them by the time I was 20, and uh, started a software company that wrote computer games. Cool. In the, back in the in the 80s. Um, and uh, we uh, we we ultimately sold most of that company to Electronic Arts and some other uh, partners. Uh, but um, I I uh, and I worked in, at NASA until I retired in, 19, in uh, 1999. That's so because cool. That's why I'm wearing this here. <laughs> and uh, I we, uh, we we had our little Mensa club. I was a member of Mensa when I was there. We had our meetings and everything. Uh, back in the day, I hadn't been to one of those in a <laughs> decade, but uh, so we did that. I, I've been uh, in the develop in in the engineering business uh, for uh, creating consumer products and running teams that create, market, and sell uh, consumer things. I've done a lot of products over the years. Um, ultimately, we went up uh, with Westinghouse uh, for the end game for me, and I, I rose through the ranks of that wound up running a being the chief executive of a business unit um before i I came to pimax but the dream job for me is uh i virtual reality you know back in my days of trying to build a a franken uh, vr (laughs) uh devices in the time of uh mtbs uh 3d i was trying to build uh devices back then and I uh, have uh, three degrees of freedom uh, with the with the Sony HMZ T1, and add all of the. I was using uh, b- before Skyrim. I was using Oblivion as my test uh, yeah. software. Wow! <laughs> For and my dream was to stand on a mountain in a, in, a, in you know in Oblivion in uh, in VR, <laughs> you know. And the dream and, has come reality. It's become a reality. It, now. You know, <laughs> it's a, it is mind-boggling how far a lot of people aren't happy with how far we've gone but you know the truth is it is mind-boggling how far we've come in this that's um, true and uh now you can stand on a mountain in skyrim and uh and fight a dragon and and <laughs> use your hands and walk around with the cyber shoes and really? it's, it's unbelievable and, and have the knuckles controllers that <laughs> yeah. have grip and and all the great watch my video that, Yes, I did. <laughs> and I, I was thinking that, you know, when I watched your video, I loved the, your video, the most immersive <laughs> setup possible. Right. Boy, you know, you want to get me watching, that's the way to do it, since I'm a big fan of that kind of thing. What is the most immersive thing possible? Right. I, I love it. That's uh, cool. So clearly, uh, you know, we're at a time where you can put together things like that, and, and the uh, innovative minds at Valve, uh, you know, building some of this platform that people can, you know, uh, tie into and you know the forward looking that these guys have had you know where you know where they where they created a platform where you can have high resolution like we have and you can have a wide field of view like we have and where you can have your own render pipeline like we have uh, you those were that pipeline being custom was required for this to work uh, to develop it on our own and and to build it up in a way where your average game works, <laughs> you know, uh, where you can immediately take advantage of all these nice things uh, that we all dreamed about for so long uh, with just an existing title. I mean, you know, Skyrim came out in, I think, 2011. 
where you can take a title from 2011, add the, all the plugins and mods, bring up the textures to you know, and the, and bring up so many uh, great changes have happened in all these years, and then have it on a wide field of view headset with high resolution and grip controllers and walking around like you were doing in your video. That is really something. I mean, people need to step back and and just think about where we are. Uh, compared to those days when we were, when we had these things torn apart and we were using duct tape and we were just trying to have right. five seconds of being able to do that with a field of view this big, right. <laughs> you know, it's really incredible uh, where we are right now. So I, I'm I'm excited to be a part of it, and and uh, everyone at Pimax is excited to be a part of it, and uh, and I think uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna show some things and do some things that that take that to the next level, you know. Wow. So that's our, that's our plan. That I think and that's a really perfect ending for this podcast, <laughs> for this episode of People in XR. I would like to thank Kevin, you for yeah, for being so passionate about the industry and for helping Pimax to do what you're doing. And also I would like to say thank you to Pimax for pushing the envelope on this industry and trying to make the most amazing stuff for people like us. <laughs> Hey, oh, thank you for showing the the most immersive VR. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. Uh, what you amazing. do, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Appreciate Great. you. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for being on the show. And yeah, talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. And that's it for this episode of the People in XR podcast. I truly hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did so, why not leave a review at your favorite podcast provider so that more people can find this show. And now. I'm looking forward to meet you in the next episode.